How does this serve me exactly as it is? This is an often overlooked technique from my book, Parallel Universes of Self, that I wrote in 2006. Have you ever just sat there and looked around and thought, right now, everything is exactly the way it should be. Everything is in its right place. Everything is absolutely perfect. I'm sure every one of us has this state once in a while. And this technique tends to create that state where everything is exactly as it should be. The opposite of this state is complaining. Complaining is a habit in many people. They don't even know they're complaining anymore until somebody else points it out. And they say, hey, Why are you complaining all the time and all day and about everything? And then they recognize, oh, wait a minute, yes, I am, in fact, complaining a lot. Complaint uh, usually drags you down. The reason it drags you down uh, energetically, energy-wise, is because it assumes that there's something that doesn't belong and is not supposed to be, should not be. Every complaint compares an ideal, the way things should be, to the way they are not. (laughs) And I'm not saying there's no ideal way that things could be. Everything could always be a little bit better. But that doesn't mean you have to down talk or complain about the way things are right now. So the question I recommend you ask before complaining, the question I recommend you ask when something is bothering you is, how does this serve me exactly as it is? Now, since complaining is a habit in many people, it can take some repetition of this, weeks of repetition for it to become a habit for the attitude underlying this question to become a habit. The habit being to see things as serving you, as having a benefit, a usefulness, a purpose, as belonging. How does this belong? How is this useful? How does this issue, problem, uh, event, situation circumstance serve me exactly as it is. So you can complain that the weather is too hot. Say, oh, it's just too hot. You know, or you can uh, get inside to an air conditioning. (laughs) But if there's no AC nearby, you can complain uh, that it's too hot. Or you can ask, how does this heat serve me exactly as it is? exactly as it is. I don't have to change it, change my circumstances, change anything. How does what is serve me? Well, for one, the heat relaxes my muscles. Um, If I've been doing sports, my muscles recover much more quickly in the heat versus cold. I remember the cold days where I would do intense sports and then my muscles would hurt. Uh, The heat makes for the most wonderful, pleasant evenings outside, outdoors. And that's something to look forward to as it cools down. Uh, Taking walks, sitting out. The heat allows for water sports, which are then uh, refreshing instead of chilling. So there's a lot of things the heat is good for, right? Or maybe it's the rain you don't like, um, and you complain that it's always raining. Why is it always raining? Maybe you live uh, in northern Europe, where it's always raining, and the skies are gray a lot. So how does that serve you? Well, uh, for one, 
It's soothing to hear. It's comforting. It makes for a pillowed in atmosphere at home, a cozy atmosphere. And best of all, it cleans my car for free. If it's uh, rain in a healthy area, it cleans my car for free without leaving spots. Of course, that's how you can test if you live in a healthy area to see if you're, if the rain causes your car to be even more dirty or if it cleans it. Come rain or shine, it serves you. If it rains, you can sell umbrellas. And if the sun shines, you can sell umbrellas, sun umbrellas. Either way, uh, you can sell umbrellas. So you can make money off both. Complaining brings your energy down. Appreciating gets your energy up. Say your house burns down and you're the appreciating type of person. You'll say, hmm, okay. You might not say, oh, this is so wonderful. This is so beautiful. That's a so-called positive thinking, which isn't really positive. It's just denial. It's nonsense. But if you're the appreciating person, uh, you, you might say, okay, hmm, I guess this allows for a new beginning. Uh, got rid of some of that stagnant energy in my life, that's for sure. Some of that weight, that baggage that I've been accumulating in the garage and in my place. Um... Let's see if I can make the best of this. Let's see how this serves me exactly as it is. And the complaining type will say, Oh, okay, uh, it's over for me. I'm done. Uh, there's no recovery from this. My life is done. Done. I say done. <laughs> so I'm not asking you to live in denial. Or pretend that all is well when it, when it isn't. Um, it's not a positive thinking technique. Uh, you acknowledge that your house burned down. You know, it's not necessarily a pretty sight. And you might inquire what caused it, and whether your insurance will pay for it. But there's some benefit that can be derived from any situation at all. Maybe your life was indeed getting stagnant. Maybe there's an actual reason for this. Before I ask how something happened, um, where it happened, when it happened, how, that's asking about linear causality. I ask why it happened. Why did this happen? As if there's some purpose or, or metaphysical reason. And I don't ask in a complaining manner, why does this, uh, bad things happen to me? But why? I'm, I'm truly curious. Why? And how does it serve me exactly as it is? You'll always find a good reason something happened if you look for it. If you look closely, you'll see that People tend to complain regardless of circumstances, regardless of how good or how bad it is, they'll still complain. Often you'll see that spoiled people complain a lot. So those who are in really, truly bad circumstances tend to complain less. Generally, because they're more humble and they wish to get out of their circumstances, so they appreciate more. And that's how they once again ascend until they get into better circumstances. Whereas those who have too much without making any use of it, without appreciating, um, we call them spoiled uh, because they complain no matter how much they get. And what is causing their complaint is not the abundance they have, but the fact that they're not using any of the abundance. Their day isn't filled with purpose. 
Because once your day is filled with purpose and you make use of your abundance, there's no complaint. People, if they have a lot of work, they complain, you know, oh, I wish I had less work. And then they get kicked out of their job. And then they have less work or no work. And then they complain again. Oh, no, I have no work. Uh, I wish I had work. And in each instance, they often forget that they desired what they're experiencing. You know, they forget that it serves them. Asking, how does it serve me, implies that you created it. That's why it's a reality creation technique. So if you're out of work and complaining, ask, how does being out of work serve me? And then you'll realize, you might realize that you originally wanted to be out of work. There was a time you said, I don't want to work anymore. You know, and then you're out of work. And then you ask, how does this serve me? And the answer is, well, now you have a lot of time. You're rich in time to define who you'd like to be instead. And you could make use of your time. You could let it serve you. And if you have too much work, you know, and you complain about that, you could stop yourself and say, okay, how does this overload of work serve me? And you might realize that there was a time in your life when you created this. You desired it. You wanted it. You said you want more work. You wish you would work. You wish you uh, were busy. And then you became busy. And how does it serve you? Well, it keeps you mentally fit and attentive and on your toes and productive and creative <laughs> and a whole host of other things. And how could it serve you even more uh, with the question then be. So why don't we do this together right now? This will uh, release your resistance toward that which you don't want, that which bothers you. And if there's no more resistance on that which bothers you, there's less focus on that which bothers you. And that makes it easier to pivot, to shift to what you prefer instead. That's the whole point of this. So write down something or think something that is happening in your life that actually bothers you. And then let me ask you, How does this serve you exactly as it is? How could this serve you exactly as it is? And this recording is going to stop now. I'll let you write down one answer or several answers to the question until you feel that relief that goes along with this beautiful technique. And if you wish, you can ask this on many different things, many different topics. You can apply the question to anything in your life. And then allow things to be useful for you, serve you. You can change and reframe the meaning of things by which things will start serving you. Things that you thought bother you, things that you thought do not belong you'll suddenly realize they do belong and they're good for you and they're useful and you can learn something from them. Eventually, you'll want to pivot and ask, what do I prefer instead? So go ahead and enjoy the exercise. My name is Fred Dotson of realitycreation.org. If this technique served you, please share it far and wide.